Welcome to Google Classroom Time Savers for Secondary Classes. Today we're going to focus on some time-saving strategies and some feedback components that you can use within Google Classroom using forms, slides, and docs to give your students meaningful feedback and cut down on your grading time. My name is Marissa Bannerman and I am an APS EdTech. If you could please take a moment to sign in, you can use your phone and scan the QR code. Select the Google Apps under the general topic and cl click the box under my picture. If you need to know what zone you're in, it's listed right next to your school in the box above where it asks for the zone. So you can click webinar also. And you can go ahead and pause until you're done. And then I'm going to keep going. Today we're going to talk about forms, slides, and docs. And the first thing I want to show you is some ways you can provide feedback to students using forms. I know that probably a lot of you are familiar with the multiple choice functions in forms, but did you know that there's a short answer option and a grade by hand option? And then the grades can be placed in classroom. So let me go through and show you an example of this. So this is my teacher view of a quiz that I assigned in my Google Classroom. You can see I have three students who have taken it. I have three responses to grade and the scores have not been released yet. There are three ways you can ask questions. And the first one is multiple choice. This is what it looks like to students and they pick one. There's a short answer, which has to be exact. So it's better for calculations or spelling or codes for escape rooms or even punctuation, but the whole answer has to be right for the Google Forms robot to grade this correctly. You are able to add more than one correct answer, but I have found that that just gets confusing. And then the third kind you can add is a long answer. So I put the image of a little rubric I made up for this assignment, and this is paragraph, and so the kids will know as they write their paragraph, what they're going to be graded on. And this is three points. So this one is out of 12 total. And then I made the other ones out of five. This is a quiz, which means there's a right answer and a wrong answer to the Google robots. So if I want to put what the answer key is, I click on the item and I hit answer key. And then here, I want this to be five points. This is the right answer. If I want there to be more than one right answer, I can have one. So you can offer on multiple choice questions, feedback for correct answers and feedback for incorrect answers. So to add this, you hit the pencil and you just type in what you want to do. And you can also add a video, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And so this gives them a hint about where they were supposed to find the right answer and why they got it wrong. So that cuts down on that step for you because kids aren't coming back to you and saying, well, why did I get this wrong? Uh, it tells them when they get their score released in an email. Uh, who is the prophecy given to? I'm gonna make this one five points also. And then the last thing is the chunk. And that one I already have made were 12 points. So this one grades automatically because it's multiple choice and I put in a correct answer. This one grades automatically and then this one is red because it's not graded yet. That's why it says zero out of 12. And then when you hit save, it goes back up to the top so you can click the next one. So here's my second student that took it. They got the wrong answer for this one. So they get zero out of five. And then the feedback sends them back to the text. Same here, they got the wrong answer and they still get the same text for their wrong answer, but they know right away that this was wrong, not based on spelling, but on the content. And then I save it. It goes back to the top and I can grade the third one. Now I release the scores to the students and I can choose which ones to do. And so then they're going to get an email that says this was your score. So here is student three. They've gotten an email from me that says their score is released. They got 10 out of 22. 10 out of 22? Oh no, what did I do wrong? Well, I didn't read the words to the question correctly. And so I answered Perseus and it gives them the right answer. 
then I go, oh, I have to go to the beginning of the sentence. I spelled acaricios wrong, which means I didn't get the points. And the gist, I got 10 out of 12. Now, since I didn't get a 12 out of 12, I have a link to a YouTube video that the kid can watch to fill in their knowledge that they didn't quite get. So now I am the student and I know why I got what I got. And I'm gonna view the assignment. And if I want to add a private comment to my teacher, I can say, why didn't I get some points for incorrect spelling? And of course, it's because in class, I said it 50 times. The next thing I want to talk about is using slides. So I know we have all assigned individual slide decks, and then when it comes time to grade them, it takes hours to open each individual slide deck. So I'm going to give you a solution for that today and how you can keep track of the grades and give each kid feedback while you do that. So the first thing you're going to do is go back to our classroom. And whose phone is this is the assignment. So I'm going to open this and hopefully it's going to work because this is a gigantic slide deck, but this is uh, whose phone is this. And so I have up here a couple of examples of the rubric and then different apps that they can use for, you know, whatever. So if you're doing a character thing or a historical thing and you want to look up the geography and what the weather was like when the character ran out onto the moor by herself, in winter to be left for dead. Anyway, you can. So instead, I assign each student their own ginormous PowerPoint, but that's not the one I grade. So then what I do is I give them a class shared slide deck. And then what they do is they post their own slide in the class slide deck. So let's say you wanted to look at text messages during class one day. You have all the kids copy and paste their slide from their slide deck into the shared class slide deck. And actually, we want to be careful that we, if you have different periods, that you label the slide decks accordingly or else it will get really uh, interesting. So this is a, a home screen that I did for Joe March. This is one example of what it could look like, or you could have text messages like this. Um, and there are a whole bunch of other things on here, but instead of grading 27 slides at once, they just put their one slide into the class slide deck, and then they can put their name here and then you know whose it is. And in case there are any hijinks, you can always go back in slides and check who did what at what time. So if you think there's something hinky going on, you can always verify. But I think um, it's probably a good idea to trust and then verify. And then if you have hijinks, you can figure it out. And then in Classroom, I have this as an assignment, even though they all, they're they all editing the same one. So then what happens is I go to the assignment page. And since I've already looked at their slide, I know what grade I want to give them. So I'm going to give each person a grade for their one text messaging slide. And then I return them. I can also provide a private comment to each student that only they see on their classroom. And then when they get this back, they will get a message from you in classroom. When we go back to our Google Classroom, when you're assigning a document, it is really important to give the kids the assignment instead of letting them upload. When they're students and they look at the assignment, they always have the option to upload. But if you give them the document, so this is the example of what I give the students, and then they replace my text with theirs. 
you can see how far each student has gotten without having to open the assignment. So right now I can tell that ELS student one is the only one who's done any work because their title is smaller than mine and their text is different. The other benefit to this is that there's, you can't plagiarize, you can't copy and paste someone else's work without you knowing there are no lost assignments. There's no, well, I don't know what happened to it in Google. Like you are the owner of the document and then you give it to them and they give it back to you. That's the chain of custody. Whereas if you have the kids open an assignment and see how they have the option to add or create, tell them not to do that. They have to use your template. Okay, so this brings me to the rubric thing. So you might recognize this rubric from our Whose Phone Is This? So in the assignment, to add a rubric, you come over here to add rubric and you have three options. You can create a rubric like we did with the last one. You can reuse a rubric or you can import it from Sheets. Importing it from Sheets requires some specifications. Uh, but that's okay because we're just going to reuse the rubric that we made up for the last whose phone is this okay so then we're going to save and see how i've made each student will get a copy they're all going to work in this document i've got my rubric attached i save it and then it is attached to this assignment from the get-go and all of the other options still apply so now i want to talk about comments if you are an english teacher or if you grade a lot of written papers, you want to know about this function. So when you have an assignment that you've assigned in classroom and you want to go grade it, you open it, here is the comment bank. Um, and you just press this little arrow to expand it and it comes out. So there are a couple different ways to add comments to the bank. So the first one is, let's say you have a long list of comments that you use all the time. For example, I'm gonna put subject verb agreement. And then I would have a contest to see who can find the coolest videos for each of these concepts and post them on the classroom page. And then I would paste them into the comment. The only thing to remember is that if you are going to use links in your comments, you have to make sure that you put them here at the end of the line and don't start a new line because if you start a new line, that's a different comment. So add multiple comments by starting a new line. But we don't want this to be multiple com comments. We want this to be one comment with the website. Let's see if this worked. It did. So it adds it to the comment bank. So then what we have is the chance to provide feedback, and what you do is you type hashtag and then any of the words in the statement, and it comes up and it shows you, and then it appears, and you comment, and then the student can go to this link, watch the video, fix their paper, and resubmit it. You can also add comments as you go. I wanna put a note here to the student to use a transition. And I'm not going to start a new line. And then I comment. And then what I can do is I go up here and I can add this comment to the bank. If you've got Google headaches, make sure you fill out a request form and one of us will reach out to you. The slide deck is available on the EdTech website under APSPD and January 3rd. If you have more specific questions or issues and you want to email me, my email address is marissa.vannerman at aps.edu. And of course, please, if you have a moment, can you give us some feedback on this session? And if you tweet, you can leave a sweet tweet for at EdTechAPS and me professionally is at Bannermaniac. Have a great day.